you can make a life which is different from the lives of most of the young men and women in Bangalore who have lost the plot. They think they're going to be happy by being slaves of greedy capital. You guys have to stand up and speak now. Nothing else is more important than to defend the freedom to choose any path you want. That is Sanatana Dharma. This word secularism is used in nonsensical contexts by people who have no idea what it means. And it certainly does not have a context here in this subcontinent and never will. Young Indians, you don't know your own history. You need to know what happened. You need to see yourself not as a defeated people, but as the upholders of a dharma that is important for the whole world. Do you have your hand up at the back? I think his hand was up before yours. I will take him and then you can come. And then I will come to you. Um, glad to see you after four years. I've seen you 2019 and it's 2023 20, now. So. What's your name? Dinesh. Dinesh. Oh, my question is regarding uh, what you have said last regarding contribution to the society. So, uh, what's the context or intention uh, one should have while functioning in the society? And what's the attitude? And uh, how to decide between two things to put more energy into what so that we get fulfilled and we contribute better? As I was saying before, this life is a short thing. If you look at the, at the age just of this planet, it's millions of years old, and you are here for a few decades. In that time that you are here, the experience is meant to be a joyous experience. It is not meant to be fraught with suffering. If that experience is meant to be joyous, the, the first and most important thing is to keep it simple. Keep the ambitions low, because the greater the ambitions, the more the suffering, without an exception. Those people who make it big in life as businessmen or as actors or as whatever. If what they do comes with a lot of ambition, it also comes with a lot of suffering. If what they do is a natural progression of what they are meant to do in this life, there is much, much less suffering. So you, as a young man living here, where do you live? Bangalore. In Bangalore. So many of the young people living in Bangalore are from the IT sector. That's where you're from, right? So that life starts out with uh, engineering college, then you get a great job offer, then already there you start to become a servant of capital, of greedy capital most of the time, not always, rather than a servant of the truth. So how do you bring together this career and this thing called living. If you were to keep it very simple, you would go a bit in the line of your ancestors. What did they do? They grew up, they went to school or they went to Gurukul, whichever. At one point they, they got a job, then they just got married. The parents choose somebody, they got married. They didn't even bother to choose themselves women or men, 
then they had a few children they did their dharmic duties and that was what kept them sane and kept them integral kept them physically strong physically healthy and healthy emotionally healthy conceptually healthy transformatively the whole being maintained a sense of dignity and health and what was it that they did they had actually a kula guru a kula devata they paid respects to the kula guru and the kula devata the family guru the family god because there are that many gods so they can choose they also paid their respects to the grama guru if they lived in a village and the grama devata they did service in the temple it was simple things they 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 lived the dharmic life and at one point if they were spiritually minded they developed an ishta guru and an ishta devata they chose a guru of their own maybe not the same as the family guru they chose a god that they could relate to and they proceeded to do seva in those two areas self realization seva together with a guru an ishta guru and seva in the temple to the gods so that they were able to project onto that idol what they considered an ideal and then reflected that upon themselves hand in hand these two things went along and they lived in a state of quiet they could do their job in peace they could do their seva in peace and they served to uphold dharma sanatana dharma and that is how they lived their lives and one day the body was dropped and there was a general state of peace and quiet in that home the children were raised in a dharmic way they were taught to bend down and touch the feet of their elders to touch the feet of the gods the gurus and they grew up in that state of surrender so the problems were less life was less of a torture you as a young it guy what are you doing for dharma you are a spiritual seeker you're sitting over here that means there is something within you that is searching right so you call yourself a seeker what is your contribution to dharma today you know sanatana dharma is endangered in this subcontinent you are aware of that it is endangered by founder religions imported into the into the subcontinent you know that at one point dharma was practiced from afghanistan to pakistan to the indian subcontinent what we know now as as india to bangladesh to nepal to sri lanka dharma was practiced it is not practiced anymore in afghanistan in pakistan in bangladesh it has shrunk and even here in india it is shrinking further and further because youngsters like you are not upholding dharma this whole generation has been destroyed by the infiltration of these founder religions and an ancient pagan way of living which is the last place on earth where it's happening is being threatened so you stand up and uphold dharma you make your contributions go to a guru of your choice and support that institution go to the temples support them i know that temples are not appealing to a spiritual seeker who's going inward but a support of a temple is still supporting dharma and make your contribution financially all the other religions they they take zakat they take monthly tithes and so on what do the hindus give nothing in in the ancient times you were supposed to do one fifth of what you earn 20% was supposed to go for dharma one fifth for your parents one fifth for your own life one fifth for your children and one fifth for your savings that was how it was done 
Who does that today? Nobody. I do it. You do 20%. That's very good. 10%. Well, now you have to increase it since you have come here. And, and not to buy as many jeans, maybe, or... I don't, I don't use denims. You're very stylish then. But you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, got it. Find a guru you connect with and support that system. Support the local temple. Everybody is running to Tirupati and running here and there. The local, it's the local thing. Support dharma, uphold it, and then you will be able to bend and go with the truth, the antar guru. Finally, the final destination is the antar guru. Yes? That is where you reach. You can make a life which is different from the lives of most of the young men and women in Bangalore who have lost the plot. They think they're going to be happy by being slaves of greedy capital. You can, you can work in the best American silly company, silicon company, if you want to be nicer about it, and you can still live a dharmic life by upholding dharma. Many of the people sitting here, they're foreigners, but they uphold dharma more and more powerfully than many of the people in this country, especially in Bangalore. And we don't want all of Bangalore to become silly, right? You can stand up, you can speak about dharma. Why not? What better thing do you have to do? Even if your friends laugh at you, tell them you'll be laughing the other side of your face. When you wake up one day and you have to start learning to speak a language that is not originating here. I think you understand what I'm talking about. It is the time to stand up and uphold dharma in the subcontinent. The time of sleeping is over. It's over. And you youngsters are the ones who have to do it. And you're going to do it. You're going to take it up with a steadiness and a steadfastness. And otherwise, you know what is staring you in the face. You won't have the freedom to come to a satsang after that. You won't even have the freedom to, to practice yoga. It's, it's happening in different parts of the country now. Hindus are not allowed to take out idol processions, which they've done for millennia, not just centuries, but millennia. So it's time to stand up, and if you want to know what action to take, speak to one of the sevaks here, they'll tell you precisely what you can do. Make that inner decision and then you'll see how fulfilled your life will become. You exercise, you strengthen up, no more fat, full, tough physical body. Because without that physical toughness, you can't achieve anything in dharma, it's not possible to, to, to stand up for that now. It will take you a month and you'll be all fit and tough. I will, I will. Yes, I feel that. I feel it's time now. And especially in Bangalore. It's losing, it's losing its heart, it's losing its soul. All those youngsters, they're just drinking their lives away. So they get up in the morning, they go to work, they wear that thing on their which is fine, it's a job. It's an annadata. Annadata meaning the one that provides you with your nourishment, anna, food. It has to be respected. Those jobs have to be respected. Nobody's against them. But then you come back in the evening and you live for dharma. Because if you don't, you're in trouble. The, the mental issues that are happening in the subcontinent is only 30 years old since capital entered into this country. So now we, we live with that new reality, but we have to bring strength, and that's only possible through upholding dharma. Otherwise, welcome to Switzerland, the highest number of depression cases in, 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 in Europe, a country which is that rich, which has everything, 
and there's deep sadness and unhappiness in many people. Why? Why? Because money does not bring everything, it can't. So take that up on a war footing. You have intelligence, you have strength, you're young. Take it up on a war footing, not just saying yes, yes. Take the step and you'll see how, how your life will be. And you'll, you'll stand up as an example to your friends. You know, they say, so many of the youngsters today, they don't have their namam, they don't have their, their connect anymore with the ancient dharma of the subcontinent, they are connected with the dharma of Silicon Valley. It is a dharma of self-destruction. Don't go that route. All these endangerment comes in the name of secularism, mostly. Secularism is a word that five people in the Indian subcontinent understand. They are using this word not even understanding what the history is. Where does this come from? It comes from Europe and it comes from the, from the relationship between the various emerging kingdoms and nations and the Vatican. It has nothing to do with what is going on here. You cannot just extrapolate something which is alien to this continent and its culture and slap it on and expect it to function here. They don't even know what that word means. Ask anyone who uses the word secularism, do you know its origins? Do you know where it comes from? Do you know what it means? No. Everyone is equal. No. Everyone is not equal. All religions are equal. No, all religions are not equal. That's nonsense. Dharma is not about ahimsa. Ahimsa is a concept which is useful in very rare circumstances. It is not a, a dharmic concept in the Bhagavad Gita. He's telling Arjuna to go and kill his own cousins. So what is this talk about Ahimsa and we are a peaceful people and we'll allow anyone and anything to trample over us for a thousand years and more? It's over. And you guys have to stand up and speak now. Nothing else is more important than to defend the freedom to choose any path you want. That is Sanatana Dharma. There are 20 different people here, each one is on a different path. One finds Shiva interesting, the other finds Krishna, the other one is connected to their own guru, she's doing Zen, the other one is doing something else. That is the freedom and beauty. And here, you can do any path you want, almost anything except if it is murdering somebody. Recently, there was an Agora Baba sitting on the dead body of his mother and meditating. Where else in the world can you do that? If you feel you want to connect with your mother's spirit, you sit on her dead body and meditate, isn't that amazing that it is allowed here? This great, great piece of earth that allows so much freedom. If you guys don't stand up, you won't have the freedom to speak your own mother tongue very soon. At least your grandchildren won't. So, this word secularism is used in nonsensical contexts by people who have no idea what it means. And it certainly does not have a context here in this subcontinent and never will. When you say stand up for dharma, does it mean like we have to defend or sometimes we have to be offensive against other religious or forces which causes threat? Dharmo rakshati rakshita. Defending may mean offending. Defending may even mean attacking. Of course, you can't do something illegal, but when the dharma is under attack, 
you stand up to protect it with whatever means are required. It's just not anything to cower down in front of. No fear, no fear, no fear. There is this idea that the Sanatanis have been a people that are afraid of the invaders and have cowered down in front of them and been defeated. No, that is not true. They have stood up and fought for centuries. They have stood up and fought for centuries. And the attack has been unrelenting. And now, there cannot be any tolerance for this anymore. There cannot be. No fear. If you teach yourself samarpan, bending, and you surrender to the truth, you will never surrender to an enemy. The one who is surrendered to the truth can never bend before an enemy. Doesn't have to, doesn't have to. I've said to many of the people sitting here and many of the satsangs before, stand up and protect Sanatana Dharma. Anyone who sits in a satsang, anyone who practices yoga, anyone who studies Ayurveda, they are Sanatanis. They have to protect the Dharma in whatever way possible. Make contributions, donate, go and be present, give your presence on a war footing. It's a Kurukshetra. And when the fear arises, bend down to the Antar Guru and the fear will disappear. How old are you? 26. Fitness. Talk to people. Read up. Learn your history. Most people don't know the history of this subcontinent. You young Indians, you don't know your own history. You need to know what happened. You need to see yourself not as a defeated people, but as the upholders of a dharma that is important for the whole world. Each and every person sitting here who has come from another country, they are here because they receive something which they can't receive anywhere else. It warms their heart to be in, in the land of Sanatana Dharma and, and it is up to you to stand up and protect it. Keep fitness, physical fitness, emotional strength, conceptual clarity. You will succeed, Vijayi Bhava. And next time when you get up and move around that chair, it won't be shaken because you'll be aware and conscious about where you begin and where you end. 